Okay, it is uh, January 2nd. Uh, we're starting the new year with a bang, apparently, with Bitcoin literally like a rocket ship uh, heading out of the gates. It's currently over $32,000 and heading, now it's 32680 uh, and as you see that graph to the right, it's phew, parabolic, it's rocket ship. So today's topic, we've been talking about Bitcoin here and there, but I'm going to go a little heavier into Bitcoin and why it's so powerful and realize that some of you may think, doggone it, I should have bought some Bitcoin. You know, that's just hindsight is always twenty twenty. The, the thing that I want you to really realize is you have a way to generate Bitcoin every week of the year for the rest of your life. Okay, that's the big aha. And all these people right now are seeing Bitcoin going up and they're like, oh, I should have bought Bitcoin. Yeah, some of you may have, by the way, and some of you have uh, Bitcoin in your wallet, but more importantly, you have a way to generate Bitcoin for free. Uh, through Cash FX. That's really good. Mike and uh, Anita, welcome. We're talking about Bitcoin. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I imagine you have heard the news that uh, Bitcoin is just going through the roof. Okay, so I'm going to go to a tab. We'll be on this tab quite a bit. Uh, this is Coinbase Pro. Okay, it's like Coinbase. Let me show you Coinbase. Coinbase by itself it's a very, uh, it's a US based company where you can buy Bitcoin. And I've bought a lot of Bitcoin on it. Um, but the pro Coinbase site allows you to buy and sell. So I have a lot of currencies here in Coinbase. Okay. But I'm going to switch over to their pro site. And the only difference is it's got the word pro in front of Coinbase. So instead of www, like back here, it just says coinbase.com. The pro website, anyone can go there. Anyone can go there. Uh, just type pro.coinbase.com, okay? I'm looking at the, and I'll zoom in here so you can really see what we're looking at. We're looking at the, the market, okay? Bitcoin is traded in a market, a marketplace, if you were. And there, there are more than, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 places in the, on the internet to buy Bitcoin. Coinbase Pro is one of many. And you can uh, select different markets. Uh, we, could wanna, we could deal in uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum. These are different types of cryptocurrencies. And then from that, there's Litecoin and there's Dash and there's so many different cryptocurrencies. They all have different prices. And uh, so that's more than we will talk about today. Coinbase Pro is a, a very substantial trading site. As, you, as I come across the top, you're going to see highlighted, I'm going to highlight it, that the price in Bitcoin is as high as it's ever been, 32,563.39. And that'll change um, as we go through this uh, webinar. So what is Bitcoin? Well, it says digital currency. And where do you buy it? On an exchange, one of 40 or could be more. Um, some are more popular than others. Coinbase is very popular. Other places like Binance uh, are places where you can try and bit uh, buy and sell Bitcoin. So what people are doing here are trading Bitcoin. They're buying it and selling it. Some people are just buying it. And I'm zeroing in right in the middle of this graph. You see red numbers above, green numbers below, and they are flying together. They're, the red numbers are coming down. Uh, the green numbers are coming up. You can go to pro.coinbase.com and look at this. And on the left side, you see some little squares that bulge out every so often. That's a higher volume of Bitcoin at a specific price. You also see them down in the lower section in the green. There's little thin uh, green bars, and then you'll see a bigger square 
moving up at a certain price. That re represents a lot of people buying uh, in the green area or a lot of people in the red area selling. Now you're thinking, well, my gosh, why are people selling their Bitcoin? Well, they bought it at, I don't know, they bought it way lower and they're selling it at 32,500 and they'll wait. Some people will wait till it drops down again and rebuy it low and sell high. It's much harder to do that than you realize, by the way. So currently right now, a lot of people are hearing on in the news, they're hearing it from their friends that know about Bitcoin. They're just like, oh my gosh. And, and institutionally, and what I mean institutionally, like big Wall Street investors, uh, hedge funds, uh, money market funds, you know, banks, big, 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 big money. And the, you know, the trillions of dollars, they're going to take like a hundred million dollars and buy some Bitcoin. That to them is a small percentage, but to the Bitcoin market, it's enormous. Okay. So we're seeing this huge uh, frenzy and this, this graph and this activity is very common. It just happens to be very active right now, very active, okay? So there's a lot of things you can zoom in on. Now, I'm gonna just try and get this graph in there. So what this represents is pretty much a, a standard graph of the value of a commodity or the value of something. And over time, especially when it's a limited value or a limited um, resource, it's not, it's not like air. You can just breathe in more air all the time. It's Bitcoin is a limited resource, okay? So if it's limited and more people want it, what happens? The law of supply and demand kicks in. If there's less Bitcoin, and that means less people are willing to sell it, like I'm holding it. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Many of you are, have Bitcoin in your wallet. You're not selling it. So that means the people want to buy it, have to hope that some people want to sell and, and some are, okay? So you can see this graph going up and the green represents a major shift in the price going up. Every once in a while there's red markers where it came down a little bit, but then the next few minutes or 10, 20 minutes, whatever, um, it would shoot back up. So it's a very, uh, volatile, very sporadic, very unpredictable resource. And uh, it's a currency that you can't put a price on it um, because it's literally on the marketplace all the way around the world. So it's a digital money you can only buy on a website. And there's only certain websites that can sell it. Okay, I'm going to go full screen here so we really focus in on this. So, um, now let's go down here. This big red box or big red area, okay? Uh, I think that represents the volume of people that want to sell or are holding maybe. And they might be holding out at a higher price and things like that. The green is uh, people that are wanting to buy, of course. There's a lot of complexity. I can't simplify this to everyone's needs, but there's kind of a graph that it appears like there seems like there's more sellers, but we know that the price is going up. So it's, I'm a little confused in explaining this myself, okay? So let me come over this far right graph or this chart and I'm gonna zoom in. So the trade history, these are the trades that are happening right now. I'm gonna try to go up to the very top, okay? So these are the exact numbers of the price. You can see it's 32,734, then 26 and 18. The price is going up and down. These are people, these are the transactions occurring every millisecond of the day, okay? And what typically happens if the price is going up, which we look over on the, on the left here, this is called a candlestick, okay? Because it looked like a candlestick the price was largely going up and then every once in a while it would shoot up a little bit higher, but there was a lot of volume inside the candle. The tip of the candlestick was 
lesser volume, but still, it was still there, okay? So what's happening over the right here, do you see all the green? Look at that. It's just green, 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 and a few reds. Green, 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 a few reds. That's more people buying at this moment than are selling. Now, every once in a while, we see a few reds and a big block of them. Uh, but I kind of see, and I think you will too, there tends to be more green than red, which means people are buying and there's less of a volume of less, less sellers. So the price is going. It's at 32.7 now. We started this webinar as 32,500. It's gone up $200 in the span of just a few minutes. And so this is uh, quite uh, not unusual, but it's, it is rare to see it go up this fast, okay? And so you're seeing that. So there's a lot of information on this one screen, okay? Um, back down here, these are the people selling. They're selling it, and you can actually buy Bitcoin and in Coinbase Pro, I'll slide over to the far left, you can sell it, okay? You can buy it with the green button. You can also sell it. Now I have some Bitcoin in Coinbase Pro right now. You can see it right here. It's a 0 0.00877718. That's a tiny bit of uh, Bitcoin. It was probably three or four months ago that I bought exactly $100. And I just kind of left it in here. I was going to trade it and figure out when to buy it low and sell it high. And that's sometimes, well, it's, it's really hard. Because the, the moment you're thinking, oh, it's going up, then it starts going down. And you're like, oh, it's going down. I'll wait till it's, you know, I'll sell it into something like a, a, um, into a US dollars. You can do that in uh, Coinbase Pro. So you can get out of Bitcoin, leave it in US dollars, which does not value, uh, does not change value. And then when Bitcoin, when it hits the bottom of what you think is the bottom and it starts going up, you can buy Bitcoin again. So you're buying low and selling high. That's the general principle. Well, I bought, you know, months ago and it's just been sitting here. So I'm holding it. It's just sitting here. It's not being market. I'm not trying to sell it, but I will show you right now. If I was to sell it, it's worth 32,708. Okay. So if I sell it right now, I can go to sell. And then how much do I want to sell of it? And it's got the maximum. So I'm going to sell the maximum. So it's worth $285. There's a little fee for Coinbase to um, sell this for me. So if you think of every transaction, and maybe there's a dollar forty-three transaction in each transaction. Let's just go here and watch this. There's there's probably a hundred transactions every ten seconds, if not more. It's going really fast. So there's a lot of transactions happening, and Coinbase Pro is probably charging a buck and a half for every transaction. But people are buying and selling because they're really making money. So it's a minor cost. Right now, I have $285 worth of Bitcoin. Okay. Now, if the, the 285.51, if we try it again, if I go back to buy and just reset it and come back to sell, I decide to sell it at all. See, it's 286. It's increasing in value. And the price of the fee went up a little bit too. It's a percentage of the transaction fee. So I'm not going to sell it. I don't want to do that. So uh, I'm going to clear that out. So I'm just pointing out that you can hold Bitcoin as I am in Coinbase Pro and just let it set. And it's gaining in value right now, today. Uh, the, now it's up to 32725 737 whatever. So it'll vary. Okay. So now you're seeing the marketplace volatility and you're seeing that uh, there's a lot of activity and you're wondering why people are buying this because the, the, the trend or the thing to say is it's Bitcoin is nothing. You can't even hold it. Why is it so valuable?
Okay. So I'm just going to do, this is a spur of the moment, by the way. I'm just going to go to a new tab. And I'm going to go to uh, images. I want to see some images of the Bitcoin network. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to type in Bitcoin and look at it's already there. And I'm going to go Bitcoin mining and mining rig or a mining farm. This is what makes it valuable. There are these Bitcoin mining farms, these computers. I'm going to try to zoom in on this. There's stacks of computers in these warehouses. Now, all of these, these are computers without computer screens. They, there's no people on these computers. It's a network of computers hooked up, okay? So the computer runs on the Bitcoin network. It runs automatically. The computers know how to run. They're programmed to run on the Bitcoin network. And all these wires connect them. You don't need screens because no human being is going to be working on this computer. So they just stack these computers in warehouses. Here's a guy working on the computers down here. There are places around the world that are just full of computers. Did they pay for these computers? Of course they did. Did they use real money to buy these computers? Of course they did. So this Bitcoin mining farm has millions of dollars, if not maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars of computers and wires and connectors and racks. And then they have lights and they have cooling and they have air conditioning and they, you know, they have guys that are working on technicians. So somebody says Bitcoin is not worth anything. Well, I'm looking at something that is worth something. We got stacks of computers here and wires and the computers are right next to each other, tightly fit to get as many as possible in a row. And then they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10, 10 rows high of computers. And this is just probably one column or one, you know, pathway down this warehouse of all these computers. And there are many of these around all over the world. So when someone says, yeah, Bitcoin's not worth much, I'm like, well, it's the computers running it that make it worthwhile. And what are these computers doing? They're processing transactions. If we go to, you know, um, any, when you buy, use Bitcoin, you're buying something, you're selling Bitcoin, whatever. These computers are confirming the network, okay? So I'm gonna log into my Coinbase account, which holds my Bitcoin. And I'll show you uh, in just a moment as I get my verification code. Okay, it's E3, B6, and then the letter D, and I can log in very secure into my blockchain wallet. And what these computers are doing is verifying the transactions. So when I come into my Bitcoin network, I've used Bitcoin before. I've bought things in cash effects. I've upgraded to a, a contract. I've also received Bitcoin from cash effects. So those are both transactions, okay? Now it's taking a moment to load, unfortunately, but right now I have $7,634.76. And this is v virtually changing all the time. It has to be because it's changing all the time in Coinbase Pro. So now we're looking at $32,779. Now I will say that the price of Bitcoin is, it varies on 40 places that you can buy it from. They're not all the same. They're, they're very close to the being the same, but they are not the same. Some places are selling Bitcoin for 32,500 when Coinbase Pro is selling it for 32,763. So the price of Bitcoin varies all over the world. In Coinbase, it's this price, but there are other exchanges, it's a different price. Just like in a farmer's market, the price of tomatoes 
is different at different farmers markets slightly. Uh, some say, you know, six tomatoes for $2 or maybe, you know, I'm, I'm using an analogy is not great, but the point is there are many places to buy Bitcoin. They're all internet based. You can't buy Bitcoin. Well, you can buy Bitcoin at a kiosk or like a, some, some ATMs, or there are Bitcoin ATMs. So that's, but it has to be connected to the internet. Okay. So back to my wallet, if it's loaded. Okay. So what are the computers doing? Um, here, uh, interesting enough, a friend of mine on CFX wanted to buy uh, $500 worth of Bitcoin. So I sold him some Bitcoin. Okay, let me get rid of that. You know, just... So anyway, what happened is I sent Bitcoin to from my address to his. This is a Bitcoin address. So how did that happen? Well, it happens when these computers verify and send the transaction and verify it. It happens in the Bitcoin network. So when people say Bitcoin is not valuable, I have to scratch my head. What do you see here? I see a row of computers stacked up as almost as high as they can go and just crammed in and wires everywhere. And the electric bill is in the tens of thousands of dollars per month, if not more. So is it valuable? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no way that you can just plunk down, you know, $100 and get a stack of computers in a warehouse like this. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of computers and wires and technology and people running it. So there's a lot of value behind the Bitcoin network and people are using the Bitcoin network like we use Bitcoin uh, in cash effects and I can send Bitcoin to anyone, okay? There's no age requirement. There's no social status. There's no every, you know, wherever you live, you can live anywhere, okay? So these transactions are what the uh, Bitcoin network is doing. Okay, so here I received $294.56. The value when it was received, this was on December 22nd. The value of the Bitcoin then, $294. Okay, they were supposed to send me $294.56, but they were off by 54 cents. I'm not too worried about that, okay? But the value now is I'll slide over this is all the network. So this is the address it came from. It's a Bitcoin address. There's no dashes in a Bitcoin address, only the letters and numbers. And then it came to my Bitcoin address, okay? A lot of numbers, you don't have to understand this. A lot of numbers and letters, but I'm just saying it's from CFX to me. And the way I got there is from a set of computers that are running 24 hours a day. There's no computer monitor. There's no keyboards on these computers. The computers run themselves all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now this guy might be working on one that had a little issue or whatever. Okay, he had to fix the computer or he's checking the status or doing something, right? This is valuable. There are a lot of computers here. You don't just get this by hoping and wishing. You get this by spending money on this computer technology, buying a warehouse, stacking it in there, getting somebody that knows what they're doing to plug all these computers together and do it right, okay? But there are people that know how to do that. This is just one of a thousand or more Bitcoin farms. There's probably a thousand, if not more, the Bitcoin network is the largest network in the world. What's a network? It's a computer system of connected computers. So the Bitcoin network is the largest network in the world. You mean to say, Chase, it's bigger than YouTube.com? Yes, by a lot more. You mean to say it's larger than Google and YouTube put together? Yes, a lot more. You mean to say it's worth there's more computers in the Bitcoin network than 
Walmart and Amazon and YouTube and Google and Twitter and all these big websites. Yes, it's the largest network in the world. Now do you begin to see why there's some value? It's the largest network in the world. It's the largest network of com connected computers in the world. These computers are not surfing the internet. No one's checking their email on these computers. These computers are doing one thing. They are verifying, they are working the Bitcoin network. And right now uh, on the trading of Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, there's a lot of transactions and it's, it's just an amazing amount of work that those computers are doing. They're transacting all these things, moving Bitcoin here and there everywhere. And uh, the price of Bitcoin is based on supply and demand. There's no one place that says, oh, the price of Bitcoin is uh, 32,768 or 66. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's varying. Okay, so Bitcoin is like a river, completely flowing, ebbing, you know, higher water, lower water. It's, a, it's, it's just changing all the time. But as people are learning, there's a network behind it of computers that is very expensive, by the way. I mean, most of you could not afford this amount of computers to buy it. You wouldn't be able, you don't have enough money to buy all these computers and the stacks of, uh, you know, the whole warehouse, everything. And the computer electricity, the electricity to run them all. Some of you couldn't even afford that. So there's a lot of money involved here. It's not a bunch of nothing. That's what people don't understand. Uh, it's, it's incredible, okay? Now I'm gonna back out and there's, you could go onto Google and you can search for images and you can look at Bitcoin mining farms and they've got them in Iceland and in Russia. Uh, there's in Thailand, places that are, um, very low cost for energy, like hydroelectric dams. And in Iceland, they have geothermal uh, electricity, things like that. And in China, okay, they're all over the world, okay? No one can stop this. No one can turn it off. It's all over the world. It's the largest network in the world, okay? And there are pictures. I mean, you know, how does this happen? You got to know. You got to know what you're doing here. All these wires connected, fans going. They have to cool the warehouse. It gets so hot because these computers are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they are churning and burning and working on transactions all the time. Okay, and they're doing this. And there are computers that will solve complex mathematical formulations. That's how the Bitcoin network works. They work with complex cryptography and numbers and it's, it's amazing. And some of you are like, well, I don't understand that. And I go, I know. I don't understand how electricity is running my computer right now. This screen, I do not know how electricity really works to run my computer and be broadcasting to you, I don't know how that works. I just know it works, okay? I, I know that when I plug it in and I pay my electric bill, my computer works, okay? So there's some things that you will fully understand, some that you won't, okay? But you accept, okay? We, most of us don't know how our car engine works. We don't know how compression and the gas to air ratio and you know all the timing and all that stuff. We don't know how that works. And we know it works. We just don't know exactly how, okay? And what I mean exactly how, like what is the exact precise law of physics and chemistry and everything going on? Why does it work that way? It's really hard to explain. But most of us get in the car, turn the ignition and don't even give it a second thought. So I don't give this a second thought, but I'm pointing out there's a lot behind everything in the world, okay? So with the Bitcoin network, it is the largest network in the world. There are computer farms and warehouses, and there are people working on these computers, and there's more computers than you can 
count. Okay, it's really significant. Okay, and so you'll just see rows and rows and rows stacked upon stacks of stacks of computers. That's a Bitcoin network. It's the largest network in the world. So when I look at the price of Bitcoin, I'm actually looking at the price of all these computers and this automated software running and no one can stop it. No one can halt it. No one can manipulate it and all that. And now we've dropped down a little bit in price. Okay, so it's come down a little bit. So it's a, it's a literally the law of supply and demand working at all times. And you can see bits and pieces of it. You can try to understand it like I've been trying to share. There's a big batch of green. There's one little red. Big batch of green. Oh, there's a bunch of red. So it's hard to know, but it, by this little graph over here, um, we can see the Bitcoin is still rising. Okay, this is a graphical representation that the price has been going up, mostly up, which means mostly green, which is what we kind of see, mostly green. Every once in a while, a big batch of red, but mostly green. Mostly green is mostly buying. And they're buying something that cannot be produced by just duplicating it. It has to be mined. And there's only about one Bitcoin per 10 minutes, I think. That's about how many uh, Bitcoin can be produced, about one every 10 minutes. So if, if the demand is really high and only one Bitcoin can be uh, sold every 10 minutes and there's a, a bigger demand, then people selling can dictate, well, I'm gonna sell it higher and they can get that price. Okay, it's the law of supply and demand. So right now, um, this is just happening like crazy fast. It's, it's mind boggling to consider all of this. And this is just the beginning of your learning. Now, when I go back, and by the way, um, my email came a little late. It just came uh, 27 minutes ago. I apologize that I did not send it out, but a lot of times I will search on the word Saturday or CFX or team celebration. You can pick up the older email that you got maybe last week. Okay. And you can re read the, and you can get the link to my zoom meeting from last week's email. Okay. Or do a search or just look to last week's email. It's the first of the month, uh, January 2nd sorry, the first Saturday of the month. And I forgot to <laughs> set it up to be on time, like at 9.30 Colorado time. Now, below this email are some important links, okay? And this one, the second one right here, is one that I still highly, highly, highly recommend. The best videos on Bitcoin that I've found on YouTube, okay? So this link, BTC, something very cool, click on it, especially after this video Zoom call, and you'll be taken to my, the best videos I've ever found on Bitcoin. And there happens to be 20 of them, okay? So these 20 videos are really some of the best ones I've ever found. So this can be a helpful resource for you when, and new people, by the way, when they're learning about Bitcoin, it's, it's a lot, okay? This is one of my favorites, Patrick Byrne of um, overstock.com, talking about changing a billion lives and stopping corruption with Bitcoin and the blockchain, okay? Stopping corruption, how does that happen? This is the CEO of overstock.com. It's a great interview and it's mind blowing and eye opening. Okay, and it's just one of the many. Okay, uh, Tika Tawari talking about the price of Bitcoin. Um, this is a TED talk, very important, talking about the blockchain, machine learning, and the cloud. Okay, all these terms and all this technology. This is a fabulous video. I love it, the trust machine. 
Um, this is also, I mean, these are all my favorites. Number 10, it's a great documentary with a lot of bankers. <laughs> bankers typically hate Bitcoin, but these bankers are like, you know what? It's pretty dang awesome technology. So they talk about the blockchain in us. It's a great video. Number 10, the blockchain in us. Okay, a film by Manuel Stagars. He was in, he's in Europe, I believe. So these are all on YouTube. So you don't have to just rely on me. I send you an email and the videos on Bitcoin are right here. Okay. So my encouragement is you can have a great conversation with somebody about Bitcoin and say, well, gosh, I got all these great videos you can go look at. And you can just send them, whoops, I clicked on something here. Uh, you can send them that link, okay? It's in your newsletter every week. We have the other links to all the other good stuff too. That's great, okay? So with that, um, I'm so excited. This, there's nothing like Bitcoin. It's, it can't be stopped. Uh, it's, it's very in demand. It's in one of the largest uh, computer networks. Uh, that's, uh, one of the largest networks on the planet. It's the largest network on the planet. There are no more, uh, there are more Bitcoin computers than there are computers for Google, YouTube. And they're just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of them, okay? So here's a Bitcoin group con controls 51% of the total mining power. The more computers you have, the more they earn by doing the transactions for Bitcoin network. Each one of these computers can guess, it's complex to explain this, but they're trying to guess the, the solution to a massive problem mathematically. And they just guess. Well, don't computers figure stuff out? Yes, they do. They have to guess. So they guess numbers and letters. They put strings of letters and numbers together and they guess. And they do that millions of times a second. It's the most amazing. It's truly amazing. I, I don't even understand how it totally works. I know just a tiny bit. But that is Gage, a... Yes. Gage, Go ahead, um, Ron. So all over the North America and the world, there are dozens and hundreds of properties that somewhere that have this kind of operation going. That is correct. And more in places like China and Russia and Iceland where they can manipulate or get low electricity cost. Here in the US, it's, it's a little more expensive. We have a higher standard of living. The electricity is a little more expensive here than it is in Iceland and other places. So wherever the electricity cost is low, you will find a lot of Bitcoin networks there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it truly is amazing. So there's just picture after picture after picture. This is a Russian Bitcoin mining farm to be built in Norway, I don't know, okay? So it's the largest set of computers hooked up together and all these farms together are hooked up. They're all on the Bitcoin network. So all these computers that I've shown you, they're all connected via the internet and wires. So these ones are connected with wires and then they're connected to the internet to another wholly different warehouse of other computers that are connected with wires. And then they're all connected to the internet. So they're all connected together. It's a network, okay? So this is pretty amazing. There's a sad day. <laughs> um, a, buy, a Bitcoin mining farm up in flames. Apparently they can catch on fire like anything else can. Electricity and heat. Oh yeah, that's a recipe for fire. Okay. So when you see this go up in flames, that's not a happy day for the owner of that Bitcoin farm just lost millions of dollars, okay? So uh, here's an aerial, look at that. Okay, those are cars there. So they got rows and rows and rows and rows and lots of computers in this little Bitcoin 
farm and it's highly secure by the way <laughs> try getting in here there's a fence it's probably electrified probably security guards probably dogs the whole deal because why inside are computers that are earning bitcoin okay very valuable they do not they do not advertise where this is by the way no one knows where this is or very few people i should say Okay, Bitcoin farms are highly secure. They have guys with guns and dogs there, I'm sure of it, okay? Because they don't wanna have anybody lock, you know, break in and start taking all over these computers. Now look at that. How many computers are there? My goodness, okay? Is that more computers that you have in your home? Yeah, yeah, this is a lot more. <laughs> So that just goes to show, and then we have this network of places you can buy and sell Bitcoin. And it's hard to buy Bitcoin, by the way. Why? Because banks don't like it. They, they like paper money. They don't like digital money because digital, digital money means they, there's no employees. Okay, banks have employees. They like charging fees. They like paper money. Um, the only people in the Bitcoin network are a few technicians, okay? You don't need a staff of 3,000. You need about 10 guys, I don't know. You, you don't need a whole bunch of them, but they're paid very well, by the way. So they take care of the computers. They make a lot of money. And, and these the other advantage, would be that the speed of the transaction. There's yep. so many people in a bank passing paper information or yep. telephone calls. Yep. It takes forever. Yep. And going back to my list, uh, we talked about corruption. We'll talk about just efficiency. Okay. So Patrick Byrne was talking about corruption. What about efficiency? Efficiency is an airplane can carry more people faster than uh, a horse and buggy can. A horse and buggy is more expensive to run. By the way, you got to feed the horse, got to water him. You can't take very much. I'm using an analogy to show that an airplane, like a, a C, you know, C-330, a big airplane military cargo thing can carry tanks and it can be in any place in the world really quick. That's efficient. Now it's costly, but it's also efficient. So there's efficiency with Bitcoin. It runs without any people running the computers. They run automatically. They run by themselves. Every once in a while, yes, you gotta fix them and work on them, make sure they're, you know, they don't get overheated and fall apart or whatever. There's very few people that are needed for the Bitcoin network, like a fraction of the banking industry. So the banking industry likes the money they make. They like charging fees, but they're about to be replaced by Bitcoin and automation and efficiency. And this is what you're also buying when you're buying Bitcoin, efficiency. It's brilliantly eff efficient. Some of you are like, well, yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of electricity and a lot of expense there. That is true. But some of these uh, Bitcoin farms are located in hydro, geothermal, electric producing areas. It's essentially free, okay? So it's free electricity. Um, so it, it can be very low cost. But the computers themselves are costly. Uh, so you have to be, you got to invest in a lot of computers to get that done. This is the world's largest cryptocurrency mining farm to be built in Paraguay. My goodness. Okay. Where, oh my gosh, right next to a hydroelectric dam. Essentially free electricity, by the way. If it's government run or, you know, some... Uh, relationship between a business owner and the, the business owner of the hydroelectric dam. Um, the hydroelectric dam would provide a lot of electricity to the Bitcoin mining farm. 
Bitcoin mining farm would say, well, we'll, we'll do a contract and we guarantee we'll use this amount of money. That's cash flow to the dam, to the hydroelectric dam, okay? I'm painting it in big, broad strokes. I don't know the details. But that is a big dam, a lot of water coming out of there, turning turbines, creating electricity, okay? So there's a very large, so they're gonna be near places where electricity is cheap, Paraguay, okay? So um, pretty cool stuff. Some of you are like, this is way more than I needed to know. And I go, yep, I get it. Um, some of you just need to know that you can uh, have a blockchain wallet and you can store it. Uh, you can buy Bitcoin on many different places. It's very powerful and it's going to be terribly valuable. There are people that strongly believe, and I believe too, Bitcoin will someday be worth half a million dollars for one Bitcoin. Half a million, probably in six to seven, 10 years. Okay, somewhere in that range, maybe three years, who knows? But right now it's 32,000. It's gonna be worth half a million. Some people really believe that because it's so efficient, it's so quick, it's powerful, it's accurate, it can't be hacked. Nobody controls it, it's decentralized. On and on, all these are benefits clearly outweigh the paper money of the world, okay? And that brings us to the Forex market. Does this mean that the Forex market's going away? No, uh, people will be using US dollars forever. And the British pound is not going away anywhere, nor is the Chinese yuan or the German mark or all those currencies, they're not going away. They're going to go digital, of course, but they're not going away. So the Forex market is still going to be here. We're going to have currencies of the world. That's okay. But Bitcoin is going to be a powerful, awesome, useful currency and it's running automatically right now, automatically on one of the, on the largest network in the world. And that's why it's valuable. And so some of you will be happy that you're in cash effects. And uh, I got an email, as many of you did, that today is payday, okay? So cash effects. Now the trading this last week was not very much. $23.73 on a $30,000 contract is not a whole lot, but wait till this next week. It's gonna go right back up. The week of Christmas and the week of New Year's is when everybody in the Forex market, and I say everyone, the big money, they go on vacation. They don't trade. They're tired of trading. They're gonna take two weeks off. So that's why our trading was really down lower than ever before. Cash effects is not running into problems. Uh, we had someone uh, text me and they were worried. Is cash effects, you know, are they going out of business? No, 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 no. Better, better than anything else. They're just, they're just having a break in the trading. Okay. So, um, and I also got, okay a unit level bonus, whoops, let me go back. Okay, the unit level, the word level gives you a clue that it's the levels of people in my team. And I earn $859.50 from the different levels in my team upgrading or joining cash effects. And I'm telling you, if this doesn't like triple in the next Three months, I'll be shocked. Why? Because of everything I just explained, the power of Bitcoin and earning it and the ability to share this with a number of people. And I haven't even gotten to copy trading, which is so exciting. And uh, we're gonna have more and more examples of that. It's, and I, I believe, actually, well, let me just show you something here. Some of you will know of Hazel Moore and this is where I, I saw just moments ago, 31,000, she, she noticed it. But in her uh, Facebook group, you will not be accepted into her Facebook group, just by the way. Um, 
So here's for the month of uh, December, 16.44% for two weeks of trading, okay? The first two weeks of trading earned 16.44%. Now what she also has said, I'm gonna see if I can find it, relative to copy trading, and I'm changing the topic entirely from Bitcoin. Oh, look at there's Hazel. Look at hers. That's her new place, by the way. Isn't that nice? Um, she is. She talks about uh, the copy trading, and I'm going to see if I can find it. She said uh, that there were 20 trades that have been positively completed in copy trading. 20, not one loss yet. So that's not a guarantee. It's just a point. Okay, here it is. Let's open this up. I'm going to bring this up because I, I, I've spent uh, almost an hour talking about Bitcoin. I could easily talk. Well, not easily, but I don't know everything about the copy trading, which is copied AWS, which means always win strategy. Are you kidding me? That's what the name of the copy trading is with CFX always win strategy. In fact, you can log into the back office and watch a video and you select AWS as the copy trading algorithm. They call it AWS, always win strategy. It's remarkable. In three months, I don't even know what our income is gonna be like because internationally, this is gonna explode, just explode because people are gonna be making money. So. Quick testing update on the AWS, okay? Always win strategy, copy trading, beta testing. There are approximately 100 people in CFX that are doing this beta testing. The testing is going very well, okay? So um, at the very end, she said, so far, so far, there are 20 trades closing in profit. I mean, there's no losses, profit. This is unheard of, but what is the title of the, um, the uh, copy trading? Always win strategy, they're that good. They are that good. Now I'm not gonna guarantee, this is not a promise or a guarantee, but they just closed 20 trades in profit. And those people don't have to move their Bitcoin or their uh, CFX, they don't have to upgrade. They can just let it run and it'll compound. Again, I could talk all day about this and we'll have to talk about it another time because we just don't have enough information. It's going to be awesome though. It's gonna be awesome. This, this is gonna make the, the world different for those of you that are here right now hearing this. And you're like, I have no idea what Chase said. I, I get it, but you will pretty soon. Uh, Richard Maud and Hazel Moore and uh, my sponsor, John Kinnear, they're going to have videos. They're going to have information to share and it's going to be truly amazing. Okay. So 20 trades in profit with not one loss yet. That's incredible, but that's their AWS copy trading. That's what they want. Always win strategy. It's, uh, you know, who, what you, can you say about that? And then combine this with Bitcoin. Oh my goodness. Some of you will be holding Bitcoin. Uh, and and, and, and I, at, at, at this point, I have enough profit. I have about $7,000 in Bitcoin um, that I have just sitting in, in my wallet. Some of you will have enough residual or extra Bitcoin and you can just let it ride. When it's at 32,000, and it'll go, it'll triple and quadruple and whatever, okay? Now I'm gonna upgrade to the $40,000 contract soon. I only need 10,000, by the way. I'm really gonna have, it's gonna take less than two weeks, okay? So it's rising in value and I'm earning more. You can't just, you can't get better than that. It's rising, your Bitcoin is rising in value and you're earning more. That's what CFX is all about. So Hazel Moore posted this, this AWS copy trading. It's just getting started. And we just went through the two worst weeks of the entire year. 
Christmas and New Year's. And some of you know, you, I just showed you the, the email. The, the first email I got, it was like, not very much. So just be patient. It's about to explode. And if you live internationally, you need to start saving money and start referring people, by the way, so you can earn some commissions, okay? Like $859 in a week, in a week from the people on your levels. I realize some of you, this will be a real challenge, but you have everything, you have the wind at your back. You have Bitcoin going up like crazy. You have my video like right now showing that Bitcoin is the largest network in the world and it's very valuable. And places like uh, Coinbase are great places to start and buy a Bitcoin and it's, it's hard, it's tricky. Banks don't like Bitcoin. You got to figure out how to do all that pretty soon in five years. You can buy Bitcoin on every street corner in the world, but not today. It'll get there. And then you have a, a free, decentralized, nobody can control it. No one can stop it. No one can hold or block your money or do anything. This is my money and no one can do anything about it. I decide how much I want to spend. I can send it to anyone, anywhere, anytime, anyhow, through the Bitcoin network. I just go to send or re request. You learn this, it's not that hard, okay? So this was a pretty awesome time here when we're seeing Bitcoin just go through the roof. It dropped, by the way, hadn't it? No, I'm sorry, it's up. It's at 33,000, goodness. Here, I thought it dropped. It's over 30, it was, it was at 32,000. Now it's over, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. Can't even talk. <laughs> All right. Um, I could, I, I'm going to have to stop. But <laughs> what, what an awesome opportunity we have in cash effects to earn Bitcoin and to hold it in your blockchain and to tell others about it. Okay. So, Steve Greer, all the way from Florida. Good to have you here, bud. Happy New Year to you. Uh, Elizabeth in Kenya, good to have you. <laughs> A worldwide global Zoom call, how cool is that? So I did record this. I'm gonna, uh, are there any questions or thoughts, comments? Am I completely lost or am I on track? I think you're on track, Chase, and it's exciting. This is Paul or Joan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 looking good, and it's nice to know that it's kind of a uh, another way of income, and it's just not an, another way. It's extremely it's growing. I don't think it's going to drop, and I see it going through forty thousand, hmm. uh, whatever. It, it's headed in the right direction. So, um, and with a bit pay card that enables access to those profits without having to withdraw mm. put it into Coinbase, transfer it to a U.S. bank and then spend it. Yeah. So that helps out there. And by the way, uh, based on our conversation last night, uh, any information on the upgrades? Thank you. Um, I, we'll, we'll, I won't do that in this recording here because I okay. don't know. Yeah, but, that's um, fine. That's yeah. fine. We can close off this meeting and then we can talk by phone or something like that. Yeah. Thank you all. Yep. I think at this point, um, mom, you always have good insight. You can unmute. I like your perspective. Are you all just excited about Bitcoin? I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better to see this than the plummeting, but uh, if it plummets, then we buy when it's low. <laughs> With faith. Right. You're describing faith. <laughs> yep. For some reason, you're muted. Uh, last night. There Okay. After I went to bed, and uh, so I just listened and listened and listened, and then you said, "Don't wait for another minute to buy Bitcoin now," because you know we're looking overnight. It went up three thousand coins, so I. Yeah. It's a juggernaut. It'll go up and down. Still, it'll continue going down here and there, but. It is really on a on a tear. And the way you know to value it too is that 
it now has the acceptance of institutional traders. So that means big corporations, big banks, big entities are buying Bitcoin and they wouldn't do that what two two three years ago they just called it trash right. it had no value so it's exciting. well they know all the computers and everything i showed you that's that's terribly valuable so they they were they know they knew they were lying and they were doing that they were lying through their teeth because they know they can make a lot of money because they wanted to push bitcoin down lower jump to twenty thousand dollars and the banks were not ready to buy it. So they really, and effectively, what did they do? They changed public opinion and, and they told everyone it's trash, it's crap. What had happened is it dropped again. Everyone listened because we that's what happens. We listen to the news. We listen to these reports and we go, oh, I apparently it's, it's trash. I better sell it. And a lot of people did. And but the smart ones know it's decentralized. It's not in anybody's control. It's, it's automatic. It runs automatically. And there are computers all over the world that other people have paid for that run the Bitcoin network. So no human being has to run it. It's truly amazing. And now we have things like BitPay and the BitPay card, or there'll be other things that are coming out and ways to use Bitcoin. Um, and some of you will start creating Bitcoin uh, between each other um, and things like that. So um, all this to say is cash effects is even more important because we don't have to buy it. We earn it. We earn Bitcoin. And so that's terribly exciting. So I'm all glad you're here. Um, this is a great topic to have and we'll uh, continue this down the road. Uh, thanks for your comments, Paul and Mom, and thanks for everyone being here. And I'll, uh, rather than keep this going and going, I'm just going to uh, stop the recording and we'll continue with some other comments.